Britain's Digital Railway. So I get that electric trains are faster and quieter than diesel trains. Yeah, and they cause less pollution, right? Right, but even electricity has to come from somewhere, like, you know, burning coal or gas. I wonder if trains could generate their own electricity. Maybe, oh, maybe, putting windmills on the roofs of the trains or solar panels. Like most types of transport we use every day, the railways are certainly energy intensive. As well as powering trains, a large amount of energy is also required around stations and depots, control centres and signalling, communications and other rail systems. And with the railways needing to run more trains to meet growing passenger demands, Bex and Dan are right that it makes sense to make trains more energy efficient and to also move away from using energy sourced from fossil fuels where we can. And the great news is that there are lots of cool ideas about how to do this. As well as making old engines more efficient and greener, engineers are also experimenting with new forms of power, like biofuels and hydrogen fuel cells, which create electricity by combining hydrogen, stored in tanks on board with oxygen, to produce an electrical energy. Any surplus energy created can be stored within batteries on the trains, which is then released to power the train as and when required. You might have heard of hybrid cars. They use a mix of fossil fuel and electricity, which they generate themselves to move. Well, did you know there are hybrid trains too? They're called bi-modes, trains that run on electricity where that's available, and then diesel engines where it's not. The handy thing about hybrid trains is that you can travel on one train to your destination, even if not all of the line has been electrified. And if an electric train has to only run a small distance without electricity, like a freight train within a depot or a local passenger train on a branch line, rather than diesel engines, it could store energy in batteries as it's moving under the wires, releasing that energy when it needs to. If you rub your hands together, they get hot. It's called friction, a type of kinetic energy caused by movement. Well, trains can use a clever technique called regenerative braking. When the driver applies the brakes, the train's electric motor goes into reverse mode, causing it to run backwards, which slows the vehicles. While running backwards, the motor also acts as an electric generator, producing electricity that's then fed into the batteries. An easy way to use less energy is to make sure trains, stations and control centres are only using the electricity they need. Passenger carriages need to be heated and well lit if people are in them. But if they are empty, then it makes sense to turn off the lights. And if there's only a few people in the carriage, perhaps the heating or air conditioning doesn't need to be so high. We can save energy by changing the materials we use to build and maintain the rolling stock and infrastructure, making sure everything we use is lighter and smarter and from renewable low-carbon sources. And that includes not just the trains, but the stations and control centres too. In the Network Rail HQ, instead of air conditioning, sensors check when the temperature is rising and slowly opens the windows automatically. When things are cool, the windows close again. Here's another exciting project in the pipeline. The Very Light Rail Vehicle project is designing, building and testing a low-carbon, lightweight rail car. It packs more of the train's braking parts into the bogey of the train. The bogey is the wheels of the carriage. Pairing this bogey with a lightweight body results in a carriage which doesn't need as much fuel to get around. I would still like to see a train with windmills on the top. I think that'd look kind of cool. Might be a bit of a problem getting into the tunnel specs. Great idea, though. Britain's Digital Railway, with support from the Royal Academy of Engineering. Find out more at bunkidslive.com slash railway.